Hello out there. James here. It's Wednesday night. How you guys doing? Anybody out there? Welcome, welcome. Oh, uh, there's a heart. So somebody's here. Oh, there you are. I love to see your little hearts and smiley faces and whatever. Thumbs up. It's all good. So I'm happy to have you here. Uh, it's Wednesday night. Rainy day here in Phoenixville. Of course, I live in uh, just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So uh, that's where I am. I don't know where all you are all from, but uh, leave it in the comments so I can find out. Some of you I know. So uh, welcome. So I'm happy to have you guys here. And uh, I thought tonight I would do a little demo of... Uh, of doing clouds on a sky on a watercolor uh, using gesso uh, of course some of you have tuned in already and kind of have found out the secret ingredient to the magic that I do and it's gesso uh, also the CP ink which was a demo I did last week uh, they all go really well together so I'm just kind of showing you some of the things that I've learned and I learned from messing up and making mistakes and it's always good to make mistakes and don't ever be afraid to make mistakes in life. So, because we learn from them. So, right? So, uh, so what I thought I would do is show you a little demo of how to put clouds uh, on a sky. I, I did a, a just kind of like a wash uh, with watercolor, uh, all in blue, just the sky. And I'm going to lay some clouds. And I thought I would show you how I do that technique. Uh, but I also wanted to, uh, before I start, and we'll do a Q&A at the end. Uh, and again, it will be just a half hour long, this whole this whole session. Seems to be working out pretty good. I don't want to bore you guys in any way. So uh, last week I did a demo uh, and I said I would be given a uh, the original that I did uh, last week in the sepia and I would be announcing that tonight. So I'm going to pull it up right here. I'm going to say the name and the name if uh, you could just contact me, send me a, uh, a personal message and just to get the, uh, the address so I could send it. So I wish I had drawings for every one of you because you're all amazing. Uh, but the more I do this, maybe I'll do some more of these giveaways. But I thank you for uh, tuning in. So here's the, uh, here's the little the tree. And uh, I'm going to be giving it away to... The name is Kimberly Dawn. So Kimberly, if you could just contact me, uh, I'd like to send this original uh, ink drawing, uh, sepia ink, uh, send that out to you and uh, so that you can hang it on your wall. And maybe it can be some inspiration to you. So uh, thank you all for uh, joining in last week uh were any of you able to get uh the cp ink that i mentioned the higgins uh before i start i can show you the little bottle again here it is again everything's a little backwards still working on that feature so i've actually enjoyed doing everything left-handed now i've always it's been a dream of mine so i don't know if i want to switch back to right hand so here i can pretend right so, uh, but again, it's Higgins uh, CP ink, non-waterproof. I put it in the post last week uh, from the last live show that I did. So anyway, so enough of me. I'll come back uh, for the last 10 minutes and we'll do a little Q&A. But I'm going to uh, basically show you a little demo uh, with the gesso, a watered down gesso, laying it on uh, on a blue blue background. And I'm going to show you how I build up a sky. And again, the gesso is, again, it's like this magic thing. You don't have to have all your clouds figured out or anything. You can use it almost like you would work opaque. Uh, so you can put just a nice uh, wash on the paper and then just kind of do the magic with the gesso. And I'll show you that and I'll walk you through it. So uh, thank you for joining me. And here we go. Okay, let me uh, get this all focused in. Okay. 
what I need is a cameraman, right? So let's see here. Let me see if I can focus it in here. Uh, okay. So you guys let me know if it's in focus. Let me see if I can tilt it. If it works for you guys, uh, just let me know. And again, I can't read all these comments all at once. Let me just see if I can get a little closer. Okay. Technology, right? It's pretty amazing. I feel like you're all here. You you really are all here. So I'm happy to have you here. So, okay. So what I did with this, uh, the paper I worked on was, and again, I'll put the material list on the post when it goes onto Facebook on the actual post. And you can uh, look up some of the uh, materials I use and you can find them online. They sell them everywhere. So uh, I work with Arches watercolor uh, paper, mostly a uh, hot press, uh, 140 pound. Uh, hot press and sometimes I'll do cold press cold press is a little more bumpy and hot press is smoother uh, But for tonight, I'm working with the hot press. So it's a little bit smoother and what I did when I when I laid this uh, wash in and uh, I didn't want to do the wash here in front of you because we would have to sit here and let it dry or I would have to take a blow dryer to it uh, so I thought I would just kind of just get this on there and show you kind of how I work with clouds, but maybe another demo, I'll show you how I lay in a sky and how you can just kind of wet the paper and, and layer it down. You tilt the piece, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of different techniques that you can use, but I can show you that some other time. And again, feel free to add in, uh, mention anything in the comments, things you would like to see me do. And I'll try to do my best. I'm just kind of just going like shooting from the hip a little bit here. And uh, so what I'm going to do is here is the gesso. And uh, again, if you're new here, this is the secret ingredient I use uh, with the watercolors. It's backwards, but Liquid X is the brand name. Gesso is the actual, uh, it's kind of the name for it. It's, it's basically, uh, it's acrylic. Uh, and what they do is they use it for uh, stretching canvas. Uh, a lot of times it's a primer or stretching canvases and stuff. And when you do water, uh, when you do oils and uh, acrylics, but I found that it works really well with watercolor because you can, it's got a lot of pigment and you can water it down. So I took this here. This is just a little, uh, just a little cup. And again, I don't put these in, I don't put the gesso on my watercolor palette. And again, I'll, I'm going to show you real quickly the palette I have. Okay. This is just a simple palette. Uh, I get these on Amazon and they're really great. I'll go into more depth on the palettes that I use and give you some of the contact info for that uh, on, another, on another session. But it's not really about the palette tonight. Uh, so I keep the acrylic away from that because I like... Because with watercolor, you can keep using the paint. Uh, usually with acrylic, it just dries up and gets rubbery and you peel it off and everything. So what I'm going to do is I just have white here. It's just the white gesso. And I'm going to take a brush. Uh, again, I use Robert Simmons white sable brushes. I, I also use rosemary brushes. But the rosemary brushes I use, uh, and again, I'll put them in the, in the, uh, on the list. The rosemary brushes I use more just for the just solid watercolor. I find that the Robert Simmons uh, white sable brushes, they're synthetic, uh, work really well with the uh, acrylic gesso. So I'm working with the number six brush here. Just going to get a little water. And what I'm doing is I'm just mixing a little bit of, I hope you guys can see that. I'm bringing this up a little closer. So it's just kind of like a little milky white, uh, puddle that I'm making right in here and again what's nice about the gesso is you can really water it down but there's just enough pigment and yet it can stay transparent and you can layer with it it's a little different than gouache uh, gouache is like a medium that a lot of watercolors will use uh, but I, I find that the gouache kind of has like a chalky feel to it and looks a little chalky on the piece and you can't layer as well as you can with the gesso so here I go and I have nothing drawn here, so I'm just going to take a watered down gesso, okay? And I'm just going to start to create. Now, you can take a pencil 
and draw what you want your clouds to be. But I, I like to create them just organically. I like to follow, like if something happens on my page, then it's magic and I'm excited about that. So here I go and it's kind of watered down. So it's not very thick. So what I'm doing, and this is kind of like just the first pass. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not adding any blue or anything like that. So as you can see, it's not pure white because it's watered down. Okay. I hope you can all see this okay. And the key with uh, doing clouds is to try to just... Uh, Kind of build them organically. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe. But organically means like you don't want to get too repetitive when you're a lot of times when we're when we're drawing or when you're drawing something again and again or uh, in layers, uh, you know, a group of clouds, you'll tend to I don't know if it's just human nature, but you'll you'll tend to draw it the same way and get a little repetitive. So you almost, it's kind of hard to describe, but you kind of want to build them organically because the beautiful thing about clouds is that they they're just so many different shapes and they change just with the wind I mean so what I'm gonna do here and again there's nothing really set in stone here I'm just kinda getting a few layers on and there's no real highlights here yet okay so I'm just kinda building them up and my light source you also have to remember where your light source is so my light source is going to be the tops of the clouds are going to be lighter and the, and the underside of the clouds are going to be a little deeper, like in shadow, right? So if you were having a horizon like where it was sunset or, or, uh, or, uh, or a sunrise, obviously you would have your light coming on the underside. So I'm not going to do that with this. I can save that for another time. Uh, so all my highlights, the brighter parts are going to be up and up top. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of blending in. It's just blending in, but it doesn't have a chalky feel to it. So what I'm going to do here is while it's still a little wet, now I would probably work uh, a little bit more on a flatter. Uh, pitch here I wouldn't work straight up like this so much uh, when I'm doing sky work but I wanted to do it to show you so that you guys could see it a little better so because uh, the it trips a little bit more when it's coming down like this so, so what I'm going to do here and you want to be aware of where you want your clouds to end a little bit and they can kind of just disappear so the way they can disappear Dip in the water, use your use your water and use your paper towel and just kind of like blend it down into nothing. Okay. So this is still wet. Now see that's a little bit more opaque, a little bit too much opaque, and you can see. Now that's fine. You can you can paint like that, but again, just like when I work with the owls or work with other things with the gesso, I like to build things up transparently because again, I'm I'm a watercolorist, so everything I do, I build in I build it up in transparent layers. So I just added a little bit of water, and again, if you guys hear me saying water, it isn't spelled W U D D E R. Uh, but you can probably tell that I have a little bit of uh, an accent from Philly, so uh, it's just kind of how I grew up. I did have a few comments asking me about that, so it's pretty amazing how we all grow up in different places, right? And uh, but again, that's kind of what makes us all different. So here we go. And again, uh, I might want to put like, uh, so this is just kind of blended down. Now I might want to go in and get something, a, a stronger cloud coming across here. And clouds can be all different shapes and sizes. Uh, some can be jagged. Some can be uh, like pillows or puffy. Uh, 
you've seen them, right? And what's beautiful about how they just change. And it's one of the things I, one of those special things I really enjoy, enjoy looking at is just looking up in the sky. Sometimes when I have a hard day or just struggling a little bit, sometimes I just kind of look up into the sky and just see how massive it is and just see how big it is. And just right away, I feel so little. Uh, but I feel little in a good way because I, I realize I'm not really in control of everything. And sometimes when you can let things go a little bit and just, uh, just look up and just let go, I think uh, there's some peace there. So at least I, it works for me a little bit. So the other thing that's really neat is that you can... Uh, with your imagination, you can see shapes, you can see things going on. I, I love look at when we're in a car ride, I'll uh, point out and my son will look up and he'll see something. And it's amazing how, how it just changes. It could be, it could be just like a big elephant up in the sky and then turns into, into a dragon. So it's just, it's just neat what our imagination can do. I, I kind of look at the, the sky, it's like this one big canvas that's just, it's always being painted. Uh, you've got the horizons every morning, uh, you know, the sunrise and you've got the sunsets. It's, it's like paint up in the sky. So that's a beautiful thing. So as you can see here, it's just kind of building up. And again, these are just layers, but I'll bring it a little closer. The gesso will stay wet enough that you can push it around. So again, I think the biggest thing is just kind of uh, having a feel for the amount of water you use. I'll bring the little uh, puddle here I have. It's not a lot of water, uh, but I, I keep dipping into, the, into my uh, water dish and just like then dip it into the paint. It's just kind of a feel thing. So it, again, it just takes a little bit of practice. Uh, the beautiful thing about the gesso is that it's, it's, it is a, it's considered an opaque medium because it's acrylic and you can really build it up. But again, I like to try to reserve the opaque parts until the last, uh, you know, I, I like to build it up transparently because I feel like I have a little bit more control. So, okay, so I'm going to just soften here. Oh boy, time is really flying. I could spend hours with you guys, but I I don't want to I don't want you guys to get too tired of me. So, okay, let me just show you this little bit here. And again, if there's certain uh, things you want to mention in comments, you can just mention if uh, if you if you will like the sessions to be a little longer, uh, if they're if they're good the way they are, just let me know. I know all of you can't see it live and some of you are seeing it the next day. That's all good. That's really the whole point of this is just, it, that's the beautiful thing about uh, Facebook is I've been able to just post it and people can catch up and see it. So, so anyway, so as you can see here, it's, it's starting to become something. And what I'll do, and maybe I'll save this piece for uh, maybe next week, I'll show you how to create, really make the, the sky glow by just going in here and go, uh, creating a nice landscape in here without drawing anything. I'll just go total brush and draw with the brush with color. So I'll probably create like some sort of earth area here, like where I'll see uh, mountains or meadows and, and some tree, a tree line. And this sky will just start to pop. And then what I can do is I can show you what I can, uh, with watercolor, how you can go back and pop some of this stuff out. So I can show you a little bit of that right now while this is drying. Okay. So, I mean, the beautiful thing is, is that you can keep going back and layering it. So now what I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to use that same brush, the Robert Simmons brush. It's all cleaned off and I'm going to take, I'm just mixing on my palette here you can't see it. Again, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to be able to show you what I'm doing here on the palette, but I'm just mixing a, a, a little deeper blue, just uh, the blue that I used already here. 
and I'm going to just kind of flip this up upside down. Okay. Just kind of prop it up and you do whatever's comfortable for you. I, I've learned how to, I, I kind of find it comfortable painting anyway. So I'm just going to go in here. Now I'm going to kind of create another layer of clouds. Now this is not opaque, but I'm doing another layer that's set back. Now, if you have trouble seeing, remember, you can swipe left. Swipe left or right on the comments, and you can see the, uh, you can actually see the whole video. The whole, you know, the whole picture of me doing this without the comments. Or you can look at the comments. I find you can do either one. So, but if you want to kind of get a look at what I'm doing, you can do that. So what I'm doing here. Is I'm creating another layer that's set back, and now this is all this is all transparent, and it's just the color that I kind of used. And you can kind of see how back in here I just created another letter uh, layer. So you can keep layering and layering and layering. I mean, you just want to be this bird that just flies back into the into the area, uh, and now this is just sky. But a picture here, which maybe next week will be what I'll do, is a whole demo of like a little landscape and really make all this pop uh, and kind of just show you some of that. But uh, the other thing that's important, uh, you tr you want to try not to let it dry. So like I'm going to flip it up like this upside down because I don't want to get a hard line. And what happens with watercolor is sometimes where you stop and if it was turned this way, Sometimes you'll get a hard line because of where the water, where it just dries. It dries right on that edge. Now you can go back in there and put gesso and, and kill that line a little bit. But sometimes you can just kind of go like this and just turn it so that some of the paint will just drop down. And again, I work a little bit more flat when I'm doing the skies. But I just wanted to have that here so I could show, you, show that to you. So uh, I'm going to come back to you because we're running out of time. Uh, and then just uh, you guys can ask a few questions. And again, if we want to do longer sessions, you just let me know. So let me uh, focus out here. I did the focus for us this time, so you don't have to see my face so close. Okay, so. All right. So we can do a, a little bit of Q&A right now uh, if you have any questions. Uh, I will, as far as uh, materials and stuff that I use, uh, I'll put them on the post when I save this video and then repost it. And so that you guys will be able to get, you know, look for the things that I use. So, uh, okay. So any questions? I have a few minutes. Uh, I'll try to answer them. Okay. So Judy Wood is asking me favorite sky blue that I use. So. I use I use uh, magnesium blue a lot of times. Uh, I use cobalt blue sometimes. It really depends. I like doing a lot of night skies too, so I'll get a lot of some of the like purples and and uh, purples mixed in with the blues too. So uh, it really depends what what the piece calls for. Uh, okay, what do you mount your paper to? So uh, Brenda's asking that. Uh, so basically. This is, usually I work on a watercolor block. So this is a watercolor block. Now this, it's all out. But this is what it looks like when you buy it. That's the arches. It's backwards. But uh, it's, what I do with the watercolor block, usually it has like, it's got like 20 pieces and it's it's got like this, this seal. So when you paint, you don't have to use any tape. And if you paint and just go right to the edge, it, it keeps everything uh, flat. Now I I was out of uh, this was the last piece and I just wanted to do a smaller piece So I just taped it down and uh, taped it to the board didn't I didn't uh, pre uh, Stretch it by wetting it or anything Let me put that there uh, So you can mount it anyway, but I you I, I I use mostly just tape Okay, so all right, so George is asking my influence, uh, classical painters or old masters. So, George, uh, I'm a huge fan of the early illustrators like uh, uh, N.C. Wyeth, Maxwell Parrish, uh, 
there's so many of them. There's uh, Jesse Wilcox Smith. Uh, I love uh, uh, I love some of the uh, pre-Raphaelite uh, painters like uh, J W Waterhouse, uh, just uh, Bougereau. Uh, love all of them. So I I find inspiration from so many painters that 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 are in the past that that passed on, but also there's a lot of great painters today that I like to look at. So, uh, let me see, Chris, have you ever painted larger than nine by 12? And if so, how do you deal with more space? So yes, I have Chris, uh, I've worked, uh, I've done actually large paintings. I don't know if you've seen the four seasons I had painted. Uh, they were really big paintings. Uh, they were, I want to say they were like close to be three, four, three feet by four feet each piece. Uh, so it, more space is just more time and more, it's actually, I find it a little easier to paint larger, uh, but I tend to work smaller. I don't know why. It's probably why my back's all messed up is because I'm always crunched over. Uh, but it, it is nice to work a little larger because you can stand more upright and step back. So that's very important is your posture. Uh, when you paint, make sure you do something that's comfortable, uh, because you could go for hours and just kind of forget about yourself and get lost in the painting. So what kind of tape do I use? Really any good masking tape. I, it's not even acid free. I mean, you acid free would be the best, but by the time I've done the painting, I pull the tape right off and it's not a problem. And a lot of time the border for me, I just put it in matte and it's never, it doesn't affect the painting in any way. So any good masking tape is good. Okay, can you give us some tips on figure painting? Oh boy. So, Mary's asking that. Mary, drawing the human form is is like if you can draw the human form, it's like it's it's one of those special goals as an artist to be able to do that. So, that that would be something it's something I'll certainly have to think about. It's certainly something I'd love to do. It's something I always have to study up on. Uh the human form, the beautiful thing about the human form is just, there's so much subtlety uh, in the detail. Uh, there's so much softness that is hard to capture just with a line. So, but it's truly, it's, I, it's amazing. But if you really think of everything has a form, flowers, uh, trees, they all have form. Uh, so, but the human form, it's just an amazing thing. So we'll see. Okay. Do you ever paint in a size that fits in a purchased frame like 8x10? So Mary's asking that. Mary, I work in all different sizes. When I go to print, most of my prints are 85 by 11 uh, They're printed on paper that's 85 by 11 that you can see on Etsy. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this shop. But uh, I kind of print them on that so that you can take them, get them matted. I do have five by seven prints and my work always looks better when it has a nice little mat around it. So usually the five by seven prints look nice with a nice eight by 10 mat around them. Oh, <laughs> this is great. A cookie meant, uh, noticed I have blisters on both my hands. Good. You're getting to the details. So I was going to put a little band aid, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep it natural. So that was actually from doing yard work uh this past weekend we did a lot of stuff broke a lot of firewood up and did a lot of uh stuff in the garden uh and i think maybe just they just working and you get the blisters and i love being outside so that's what they're from it's not from painting i never get blisters when i paint so okay uh so any more oh okay are you inspired by stories like chronicles of narnia george is asking that very inspired in fact one of my favorite uh favorite like characters is uh, is mr tumnus from narnia so uh was something i grew up on and i still i still love the stories today so and it looks like we got two minutes left so What's my favorite thing to paint? So Anna Marie is asking that. I love painting forms, I, I like uh, figures uh, and people. So that's probably my favorite. But 
probably if you look at it, it's probably the trees. The trees seem to always keep popping up, the trees or the moons. Uh, but the thing that I really love is trying to capture someone who's real and capture them in a painting and then kind of using my imagination and going from there. So, uh, so I'll take one more question. Uh, so Chris is asking, do you think your son will follow you in art? Well, I don't know, but he is very talented. Uh, he loves to, he loves to draw and he loves to paint, but he's also very good. He's a great dancer. He's a great actor. He's good at a lot of different things. We're just going to see what happens. So, uh, again, thank you for being here. Let me know, uh, any kind of things you want to suggest in it. Just let me know in, in the comments when I leave the post. Thank you all for being here. And, uh, Kimberly Dawn, remember to contact me for this. Anyone who might know her out there, she's getting this, uh, original sepia drawing. I'll do this again. And if there's anything you guys want want me to do uh, in future sessions, like next week, or well, next week I think I'll probably continue with this piece and show you a little another little trick. Uh, but I love you guys and thank you so much for being here. And stay safe and uh, make memories with your families because again, this is this is time that you have with your family, so just make the best of it, you know. But just stay safe. So, okay. I'll see you later. Take care.